Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of my Discord JavaScript bot tutorial. In this episode, we'll just be getting started and setting up the basics for our bot, getting it to connect to the Discord server, as well as respond to a very simple command just to ensure that it's working. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download Visual Studio Code. That's uh, my editor of choice. I would highly recommend it. There are other editors, and honestly, you could just use... Um, well, I would not recommend Notepad. If you if you don't want to download Visual Studio Code, you can look into Notepad++. But uh, Visual Studio Code is very nice. Once you have that downloaded and installed, you're going to need to install Node.js, at least version 7. So just the current version will be sufficient. So for a long time, JavaScript was something that was used in browsers, well it still is, but it was used exclusively in browsers to sort of manipulate the content on the page. And if you ever get into web development, that's the that's what you'll be doing with JavaScript. But Node is a um, JavaScript runtime that allows you to run JavaScript outside of the browser. So you don't need an HTML page, you don't even need a browser. And it does actually use the JavaScript engine that Chrome uses. Um, but it's outside of the browser, which is the important part. So once you have those two things installed, make sure you have a empty folder that you can use for your project and then go ahead and open Visual Studio Code and you'll want to open the folder that you created for this project. And it should be empty. Sweet, so now we're good to go. So the first thing we want to do is initialize the node package or the project is pretty much what it is. So to do that, um, we could create a JSON file in the right format, but that's too complicated. They have a, a really nice uh, command line interface that'll do it for us in just one line. So um, open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code by hitting Control tilde on your keyboard, or you can go to View Integrated Terminal. Um, if you don't want to use this, or if it isn't working for some reason, you can use the command prompt on your computer but um, I like to use this because it's the exact same thing and it's it's quite convenient. So just type npm init and just hit enter through all these things until you get here and type yes. And then it creates the package.json file. So the only thing in here you really need to pay attention to is right here the main file index.js. This is the JavaScript file that it will try to run, that node will try to run when you run the program. So right now it doesn't exist, so we need to create it. So let's create a new file, index.js. Sweet, and just to make sure it works, let's console.log, hello world. So console.log is a function that prints out whatever you give it. So we gave it hello world. It'll print that out to the console. So now in order to run our JavaScript program, just type node, and then a period is um, tells it to run the project that's in the current directory. And voila. So we, we want our, our program to do a little more than just print hello world. We want it to be a bot and to connect to the Discord server and et cetera, et cetera. So in order to do that, um, instead of writing all the code to our, ourselves to connect to the Discord servers, there's a nice little library called discord.js that does it for us. So to install discord.js in this project, just type npm install discord.js and then dash dash save. And that'll just take a second to run and it will install discord.js in the current project. So now it's really easy to use. In order to um, import that into the current file, const discord equals require discord.js. So if you've ever used JavaScript before, you may not have seen the const. You may be used to saying var discord, so that creates a new variable. When you say const, that's the exact same thing, except um, you're not allowed to change discord. So if I come over here and try to set discord to anything, and then try to run it. Oops. If I run it, then it'll have an error because you can't set it. So it, it's not really necessary, but it's there's really no reason for us to be changing Discord again. So that's why we set it to const. So now we're going to create the bot itself. 
And what happens here is Discord is the Discord JS library that we import using this command. And that is inside Discord. And Discord has something called a client inside it. And the client is what will connect to the server and um, handle all those details. So we get a new client out of Discord and assign that to a variable, which we will call bot. And it is also a constant. So in order to have the bot log into the server, we have to tell it to do so. Say bot.login. And then we got to put the bot token. And currently we do not have a bot token. We actually do not even have a bot. So let's go ahead and create one. You need to go to discordapp.com slash developer. Here's the page. And um, go to my apps, click on new app. Or um, if you already have an app from the previous tutorial, you can just use that and skip this step, but I'll go ahead and go through this. I'll name him quote after the single best protagonist in any single player experience ever. And then we want to make it into a bot user. So now we have our bot and our bot user. All you got to do is click here to reveal the token and then copy this. Now this token is pretty much your bot's password. So if anybody gets that password, all they have to do is write a bot and then paste your bot token right here and then they can log in as your bot. So do not let people see this. That is very bad. If someone does see it, click this button and it'll be reset. Anyway, so now we have, uh, we're loading Discord, we create the bot, and then we have the bot login. Let's test it. Come down to the console, type node, period. And the bot is running. If we open Discord, well, I'm in my server, but we haven't added the bot yet. So we gotta go to one more website. Link will be in the description as uh, will all the other links. This is a Discord permissions calculator, and um, hopefully this will be made easier in the future, but for now, um, you gotta go through and check everything you want. And the reason you have to do this is because anybody who owns a server can do this, and so um, if you create a bot that can kill everybody and, and ban everybody, then, and they don't, maybe they, they don't trust your bot, so they, they don't give you all these these permissions, but we do trust our own bot, of course. And you need to come over here and copy your client ID and paste that down here. And then that'll give you a link that you can click on and choose the server to add it to. So the servers that will show up here, I'm in many more servers than this, but only servers that I, I have managed permission on will show up here. So then click authorize. And if we go back now, our bot is in the server. Awesome. So we have a bot, it connects. Let's just do a simple uh, command to make sure that it's working properly. So there's another library that we'll be using in future tutorials that makes writing commands so much easier, but just for the sake of example and to, um, for the sake of brevity, I guess, I'll just be doing a, a very simple example without using the library. So this code right here is registering a, or it's roping off this little piece of code. And it's saying every time a message is sent to any channel that we're in, run this piece of code. And then this will be the message right here in this variable that was sent. So everything between this brace and this brace will be run every single time someone sends a message to any channel that we're in. So we're just going to do a very simple check if message.content equals ping, then message.reply pong. So if someone says ping, then the bot will reply pong. So um, the bot is running and we made that change, but if we go to Discord and we type ping, you see nothing happens. And this is from me testing before, ignore that. But if I say ping, nothing happens. And that's because um, we, when we started the bot, we hadn't made this change. So when you start the bot, it loads it into memory 
and then it runs off the memory. So if you make a change to the file, you have to close the bot and then run it again. So the way, at least on Windows, to, to close the bot is to hit Control C, and then it brings you back to the command line where you can type, and then you can run the bot again. And oops, we appear to have an error. Client is not defined. Okay, I accidentally set client here. This needs to be bot because this is the bot right here that we created. So then when the bot receives a message, it does this. All right, let's try it again. All right, no errors. So that means it's running. And if we come in here and type ping, it'll say pong. But um, notice it says at entity comma space pong. And that's not what we told it to say. We told it to say just pong. So th this is useful in a lot of circumstances. It's a nice shortcut. Um, reply will reply to whoever sent the message. But maybe you just want to send a, a message without that at at the beginning. So in order to do that, you need to send a message to a channel. And we can get the channel that the message was sent to like this message dot channel. And then you just say dot send message pong. And if we close the bot and then start it up again, and then type ping, then it says pong without the at. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you if this helped you, please feel free to leave a like. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post your code in the comments below or just your questions. Um, if you do post your code, don't just paste it directly into the comments because sometimes YouTube flags that as spam, and then um, I won't be able to to see it for. A little bit longer but if you post it on gist.github.com and then post a link to that then I'll be able to see it and I'll try to get to it um, as soon as I can so I'm going to be doing another video to show how to install the command plugin for discord JS and how to use that and then after that I'll probably be doing some longer videos about um, not really plugins but kind of groups of commands that you can do so like a video on administrative commands like kicking banning uh, giving people roles, muting, stuff like that. And definitely a video in the near future on a music bot, one that can play sound effects, music, and be able to, to cue songs and, and stuff like that. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I would encourage you to click that subscribe button so that you get the future videos in your subscription feed. Thanks for watching.